Elimination from alcohols. The word elimination means the release or elimination of a small molecule from a bigger molecule. So if we take an alcohol in the presence of an acid catalyst, H+, we form an alkene and water. The water molecule is eliminated or released. And because a water molecule is released, we call it dehydration. If you add a water molecule, it's hydration. And if you remove a water molecule, it's dehydration. So take ethanol, for example. Ethanol has an OH group, and on that oxygen, we've got two lone pairs of electrons. In the presence of sulfuric acid, H2SO4, we get the following mechanism. The first step, the electron pair on the oxygen of the hydroxyl group joins to the hydrogen. We break the OH bond in sulfuric acid, and that's equivalent to sulfuric acid donating a proton to the hydroxyl group. So we can say the hydroxyl group is being protonated. That means it's got two hydrogens attached to it now. It's positively charged. And we're also left with a hydrogen sulfate ion, and there's a negative charge in the lone pair on that oxygen. Remember, the charge is balanced. So at the beginning, it was electrically neutral, so overall, the charge is neutral. The oxygen attacks a hydrogen next to the OH group. The electrons make a carbon-carbon double bond, and we kick out the water molecule. So because the electrons from the CH bond went between the carbon and carbon, we've now got two bonds, so it's ethene. The water molecule is neutral because both electrons went towards that positively charged oxygen. And we also remake our sulfuric acid molecule, H2SO4. So notice a sulfuric acid molecule, H2SO4, has not changed in this reaction. It's not been used up. So it's acting as an acid catalyst. It's regenerated in that last step. So let's have a look at what happens if we do elimination from an asymmetrical alcohol. This is a slightly more complicated example. We'll use butan 2 ol so but means there's four carbons in the chain. And butan 2 ol means the OH group must be on the second carbon. And it doesn't matter which of those two carbons we choose. If we do it on that carbon, we just number from right to left. So that's butan 2 ol Remember the lone pair of electrons. This time we'll abbreviate the acid. We'll just use an H plus instead of drawing the whole H2SO4. And this is completely valid. The electron pair from the oxygen attacks the H+, plus, or we, we protonate the hydroxyl group. And it looks the same as before. So on that second carbon, we now have an oxygen with two hydrogens attached. It's positively charged. Pop the other hydrogens in, and that's the species we form. Now remember, the next step, we take a hydrogen ion away from the carbon next to the one that has the oxygen in. So we can take it from one of those hydrogens or one of those hydrogens. We can remove a hydrogen from the left or the right-hand side. Let's have a look at what happens if we take away a hydrogen from the right-hand side. So the electrons in the carbon-hydrogen bond make our carbon-carbon bond, and then we kick out the water molecule. So we'd have a chain of four carbons in a row, and the double bond would be between the end two carbons. Remember, each carbon can have a maximum of four bonds. So this is butuanine, numbering again from right to left. Also, we've kicked out a molecule of water and a hydrogen ion. But what happens if we remove a hydrogen from the carbon on the other side? Well, both of these can happen, and both of these do happen, so we're going to get a mixture of products in this reaction. If we remove a hydrogen from the other side, the electrons go down between the two middle carbon atoms, and we kick out the water molecule. And this time, we've got two possible products forming from this step. Because we're going to form butuene, butuene can exist in two different forms. The CH3 groups can be on the same side of the double bond like this. So we would call this cis-butuene. And remember, that carbon-carbon double bond can't rotate. Also remember to form the water and the hydrogen ion. So that's cis-butuene. But alternatively, the two uh, methyl groups can be on opposite sides of the carbon-carbon double bond, so it would look like this. And this would be called transbutuene. Trans means across. And again, this can form. So we're going to get all three of these organic products from this reaction. We're going to get cisbutuene, transbutuene, and we're also going to get butuanine. But what's the relationship between each of these different products? Well, they all form in the reaction, but you also need to know about the relationship between them. So cis and transbutuene look very similar. The carbon 
carbon double bonds in the middle of the molecule. The only difference is um, the methyl groups are on opposite sides, so we call it geometrical isomerism. These are geometrical isomers of each other. But what's the relationship between these two and butuanine? Well, the alkene group, the double bonds in a different position on the chain, so that's also a, that's a position isomer of butuene.